Morning, everybody. So, welcome to Sit, Stay, Proxy, Good Beagle. Why I love the Beagle Bone Black and why you should too. So, who the heck am I? Um, I'm a senior wireless consultant with CDW, as Steve said. Uh, I'm doing the network here. Did the network yesterday at ThoughtCon, so you'll see me running around a little bit. Spare time, I brew beer. Uh, I play with electronics, and I mangle Python. Um, you can find me underscore CRV on Twitter. I'm Boo on IRC on Freenode, and if you're a ham, I'm KCADHY. Or if you want to buy me a beer later, which I do accept, my name's Colin. So let's get into it. What is the BeagleBone Black? And without really making a big mess of that, I'll put one here. If you guys want to pass that around and take a look at it, it's kind of neat. Um, and then I've got one that I'm going to gesture with. So it is a embedded uh, device, much like a Raspberry Pi. Got an ARM processor, 512 megs of RAM. Uh, two gigs of onboard storage, a obviously graphics processor, and some microcontrollers. Basic connectivity, much like the Pi, USB client, USB host. We'll talk about the USB host a little bit more later. Ethernet, uh, HDMI in the form of a micro HDMI, and then um, two 46 pin headers. So you can see those headers. Let's see if I can get this to go right over here. Lots and lots of headers. Um, all the other stuff I mentioned, etc. So you're already saying to yourself, but I already have a Raspberry Pi. Why do I care? Well, let's take a look at the difference. So uh, BeagleBone, base price is a little bit more. And the compelling reason that you want to pay that extra 10 bucks is the onboard storage. So with a, a Pi, you have to buy a flash card. With the BeagleBone, you've got two gigs on board. The newest Rev, Rev C, actually is going up to four. Uh, that's coming out pretty soon, I think. They're working on producing. Same RAM, um, as I said before, that, that micro SD is really nice on top of the, the two gig on board. So you can run the on board if you want just something lightweight. If you want to do something larger, I usually throw like a 16 or 32 gig on there and it'll boot right off of that as a, uh, a secondary boot. Again, micro HDMI, uh, the power draw, you've got a little bit more coming off the BeagleBone than the Pi. And depending on the Pi, if you've got the Rev-A, you've got less on the board and there's less power draw. So if you've got some sort of project that you're really looking at power, yeah, this might be a better choice. Uh, GPIO though, BeagleBone wins, hands down. Lots and lots of pins. Uh, I showed you those uh, pin headers before. You can do a lot of configuration on what those actually do and use them for all sorts of great stuff. Uh, versus eight on the, on the Pi. And then, you know, all the standard USB, et cetera, et cetera. So expandability of the BeagleBone versus the Pi. Uh, BeagleBone's got something called the cape. It plugs in much like an Arduino, um, right on those headers. Some of the notable ones are CAN bus. CAN bus, if you don't know what it is, is uh, what a lot of automotive uh, systems run. So you can hack your car. CAN bus is available. Just get the cape, throw it in there, and you're playing with CAN bus. There's also an LCD, and there's actually an Arduino shield adapter, which I, you know, I'm not a microcontroller guy, but I'm sure there's a reason that you'd want to plug a microcontroller into an embedded board. Pi has stuff like uh, Pi Face and, you know, the camera now that's easily available. Um, BeagleBone does have a smaller community base. So I was talking to Video Man yesterday at ThoughtCon, and he was saying, you know, we ran one of these for a, a robot. We did a Burning Man. It was really cool, but I'll be damned if I can figure out X, Y, Z. So looking at the Pi, you've got a huge community base, which is great. If you, did, you want to do that one weird, stupid, esoteric thing, someone else has done it and hopefully written a blog post about it. So who cares, right? Uh, why are we talking about this? Um, enter the USB gadget API. This is what I find compelling about this board. What that is, is a USB to virtual adapter that is cross-platform. And if you look at my little diagram here, I'm awesome at Visio. It is a USB port plugged directly into the Pi, which comes at, as a virtual Ethernet adapter. So you've got what looks like a, a network card through the USB cable. And then obviously your, your wired port here if you want it, or USB for wireless. And again, my little ASCII if you like ASCII, which who doesn't? Uh, let's do our first demo, and hopefully demonstration, not demolition. But I recorded it because this is my first talk ever, so I didn't really want to sacrifice a goat to the demo gods. 
All right, so we're just going to step through kind of getting this installed. Um, I apologize that the video in the corner is a little small, but I have an old camera. <clears throat> Plug that in, you get a couple blinky lights. Um, oh, and I sped some of, the, some of the video up just so you guys didn't have to watch driver installs, which are, you know, ultra thrilling. Comes up as a, a drive. There's a first partition on the drive it actually has everything you need on there. It's got all the docs, all the drivers, uh, all the specs. Really, really handy. You don't need to go download stuff. You just plug it in. It comes up as a fat partition, and, and away you go. Um, I'm throwing in the 32-bit driver as I've got a Windows 7 32-bit box here. Um, it's coming up, and kind of fast forward through this in a second. Unfortunately, the drivers are unsigned. Uh, I sent a tweet at him a little while ago. I, I'm not sure if I can actually find someone at TI to, to listen to me about it, but that's kind of a, an irritating thing. So as I mentioned before, all the stuff is on there. Um, the hardware docs, if you want to build yourself a case, you can pull the spec sheet and look at the dimensions. I mean, everything about this board is on the board already. It's fantastic. Uh, fast forward, our install is done. Once you've installed those drivers, rather than just a flash drive, we're now going to see our Linux gadget come up. So in a second here, you'll notice that all of a sudden I have a new network adapter. And it'll say, at least in Windows, it's got a little Linux gadget right there. It tells you what it is. And it comes up with an IP. So out of the box, uh, it's got a point-to-point. -point and notice I didn't configure it. It's running DHCP. And I'm going to get an address of 192.168.7.2 right there. And 7.1 is the other side, the actual BeagleBone itself. Uh, finally, you can get in and, um, you know, secure shell, do whatever you want to do. It's just a regular network. I'm going to skip through this, keep moving. Um, my use cases. So some examples of why I love this thing. Like I said, I'm a network guy, right? That's what I do day in, day out. Um, I use this thing for wired and wireless sniffing. Note that if you use more than one card, you probably want a powered hub. Uh, the power draw off of, you know, Three cards, if you're looking at all three, two, four channels on the wireless side, it's a little bit much. So go get a cheap powered hub, plug it in, you're good to go. T-Shark, Airmon, TCP dump, whatever your favorite sniffer is. Uh, I use services, DHCP, DNS, FTP, etc. I stage and configure switches, wireless. So I need to turn this stuff up in an environment that's not plugged in anywhere yet. So this thing provides everything I need off of that F0 device. So I'm on it on my machine, F0 is doing all my services, I'm good to go. It also does VLAN tagging, it's Linux, right? So VLAN tagging is easy. I can make a trunk port, plug my BeagleBone in, and sit in 10 different networks at the same time without doing weird routing, natting, any stuff like that. I can just tag traffic. Console server. If you're familiar with switching, routing, a lot of Cisco, et cetera, devices have a port. You can console in if you have a USB to serial console adapter. Screen knows about it. Those drivers are in the kernel and like two, four and beyond for most distros. So out of the box, you're good to go. And then I use Gate1. So Gate1 is a web-based terminal emulator and it exists on the factory BeagleBone right out of the box. If you put a different OS on there, like I, I'm a Debian guy, so I usually put Debian on mine, uh, you do have to install it. But you know, this is the, the Gate1 demo page. Uh, the developer's got a neat little menu-driven thing that you can kind of play around in. Uh, this is the newer installed on my Debian. I've created these little the applications so that I can click um, Bash, and I can get a Bash shell in, in my browser. I can click Fake DNS. I've got a little script that responds to every DNS query with the IP that I give it. And then here's just Bash, right? So you name, fdisk. Whatever, it's just a shell in a browser, so you don't actually need to secure shell in if you don't want. Uh, note, I am using SSL, and it has a PAM module, so I'm actually authenticating with my user to get onto that. Uh, scripting platform, like I said, I write horrible Python. Um, Bone script, no JS library that comes with this. It's kind of a low-level thing. It's uh, akin to Arduino programming. But you can blink all the lights and do all this neat stuff right, again, from the web page, on the BeagleBone Black, out of the box. Play with the, the little buttons they've got, turn the LEDs on and off, and there's a whole lot more you can do with it. Bash, Linux, obviously. Ruby Pearl, whatever the cool kids are using. And Jeff gave me crap because I put 
Ruby below bash and lumped in with Perl, so committed a cardinal programming sin. VPN and proxying, so secure shell into the BeagleBone. Uh, use the, the dash D for dynamic on Linux or Sox proxy in PuTTY. I usually fire up Tmux or Screen to keep my session going in case I drop for some reason. And then give yourself a network connection to the outside world, uh, Ethernet or WLAN. And then you can sit on multiple networks, right? I've got customers that they give me VPN access, but it's full tunnel. I can't get to the internet or I can't get to my home stuff. So I throw the BeagleBone on here. I use VPNC, OpenConnect, which will do SSL. Um, you could set up a PPTP tunnel, IPsec, OpenVPN, any vendor you can think of that'll work in Linux. You now have a network that you're connected to and the BeagleBone out to another network. So adding to that, throw in Foxy Proxy and you've got a way to use a specific browser for that other network. Um, it's got the ability to do regex. So a lot of times if I know my customer network is 10 whatever, I'll write a regex to take 10 whatever and throw that through the proxy. Everything else, I'm going to apple.com, reddit, whatever, goes through my network connection. So I can sit in two places at once without really having to worry about which way my traffic's going. So some other use cases, Dropbox, Smartcast, Blackthrow. I mean, you could see this thing, it's not very big. So you could use it like that, you know, pwn plug type stuff. Pen testing platform, it's an ARM Linux box. You can put pen to, you can put Kali. I haven't tried it, but maybe the community version of pwn plug would run on there. Uh, or roll your own. Print server, APRS for the hams. A 3D printer, there's a cape called the Replicate that actually runs a 3D printer, which is kind of cool. Temperature sensor logging. So I brew beer and I like to watch temperatures. So I, I made some ugly code this winter and uh, looked at temperatures out of my back porch. See how awesome the winter was here in Chicago? It was, I'm not even sure it's done yet. And then, you know, Tor Middling Gateway. Hmm, let's look at that a little bit. So what's Tor, if you're not familiar? Free software for enabling an, uh, online anonymity and censorship resistance. I won't read the whole thing. Sorry, it's an eye chart. Um, but Tor is a great thing, and having hardware enforcement makes it pretty easy. So why were we doing that? Well, in theory, there's less leakage. You've got a hardware device dealing with all this rather than your misconfigured uh, client side. There's less configuration from the user side once you have this set up, so I could just plug something else in without having to worry about the Tor browser or you know, having a, a Tails box up. Uh, like I said, misconfiguration, less likely. And you can run anything through the hardware, right? Put your, your wireless scale, put your Xbox through it. You know, stuff, weird stuff that you have at home that's on your wireless, you could pop that through a box doing Tor. And there's a couple implementations. So the Grug's got Portal and Portal of Pi. Uh, Adafruit actually sells the Onion Pi Pack where you have a Pi. I think they have a wireless adapter and then some good instructions on how to do that. Poga Plug has a product called the Safe Plug. I haven't really looked into it, but it exists. And uh, TorGuard.net has a bunch of DDWR machines, uh, all sorts of, whatever they can shove it on there, they've got one you can buy that's already got Tor stuff enabled. So demo number two, more demolition. So I ended up writing a, a bash script just to kind of do a proof of concept on this, uh, this idea that we have a Tor middling box. So I've got a link later and you can always ask me, but uh, it, it's all out on GitHub. But the, uh, the guy who did a, lot, did a lot of these builds, his name's Robert C. Nelson, and I think he's a TI employee, but he keeps up to date images of a couple different distros out on the wiki. So I'm starting here by basically using Win32 Disk Imager to take the pre-built image and throw it on a flash drive. Again, this is sped up. I wish it wrote that fast. Um, but it's kind of like DD for Windows. So I don't have to do anything beyond take that image, blow it into this drive, and then plug it in. So you see, there's my flash drive, right? Uh, my other career is a hand model. And uh, plug it in and fire it up it'll uh, automatically recognize that you've got that plugged in there and boot off of that drive rather than boot off the internal. Now I'm just putting in a USB cable and then a network card. And that's pretty much it. You know, it'll come up on my home network. 
Uh, we're taking it as written that the drivers are already installed so that it's going to come up as a nice uh, Ethernet device. And then we're going to be able to configure it. Again, nice little blinky lights. Um, and I've got, this case is kind of nice. It's rugged and it's metal, but it's harder to see the lights. The other one I've got there was an Adafruit uh, freebie. I tweeted about a different thing that I did with it, and they sent me a free case, which was really nice. Um, but you can see the lights better in that one. All right, so we're, we're plugged in here. <clears throat> in a second, this guy will come up, and we'll be able to make a connection in. Again, it'll, it's going to give us that 192.168.7.2, and you could configure that. It's just a, a standard config on the Linux box and Debian Etsy network interface. So again, 7.2, 7.1 is the gateway of the BeagleBone. And from here, I can actually get into the box and, and run my script. So let's fire up Putty real quick, or your secure se shell session of choice, 192.168.7.2. Uh, Robert Nelson's, I, I did this demo like 25 times, so there's SSH key errors every time. Uh, Robert's default login is Debian and temp PWD. So we'll get in that way. Obviously, you want to change that after you set this up. And then um, we're going to pull down, we'll take a look real quick first. So you name, I'll show you that it's Linux ARM and then take a look and you'll see that I'm on my home network, nothing fancy, just behind a, a NAT. And then my USB zero is the UX, the gadget has that 7.2. So now I'm gonna grab my repo out of GitHub, uh, clone that real quick. How am I doing on time? So um, I got a couple pieces up here just about how to grab that image, how to flash it, and then boot with a connection, very basic stuff. Um, I'm lazy, so we're doing this as root. And I'd copy and paste just so that if you really wanted to do this directly how I do it, you could copy and paste, and hopefully this would work for you too. In the repo, it's really just a shell script and a readme. So we're going to make that shell script executable, and then we're going to fire it up. And for the most part, it's updating Debian. Um, I'm going to do a removal of the secure shell keys and, and regen them just because, you know, it's a good idea. And again, this is all sped up. Um, the logging is ugly. And, and if you've got any recommendations and want to see this better and have suggestions, please let me know. Uh, email me or, you know, fork the project, whatever. But it's got logging to the terminal and it's got logging to syslog and it's a little jumbled. But you can go look at the script if you understand what is going on in the bash script. It's pretty easy to figure out. But essentially it's set up IP tables right, um, grab the repo for Tor, get that installed, and then do a real basic Tor config. So now that we've got this set up, um, it's reboot already. And now if you notice here, I've got that 7.2 as a DHCP and DNS and as the gateway. So now my machine sees this as a box that can route traffic and if you see over here, I don't have any other interfaces installed here, right? So it's just my BeagleBone, which is, again, connected to my home connection. And if I hit the check Tor, I'm using Tor now, right through the box. No other connections to the Internet. So this guy's doing all the work for me, and my misconfigured, horribly configured Windows machine works. Hit Google, you get the nice little, you know, you're in another country notification. Um, UK. So, you know, it's functional. It's, it's doing its job. Now, I'm not a Tor expert, so there might be some leaks. There's a lot of things you have to consider, Java, browser plugins, et cetera. Um, but it works. So if you have better suggestions for some of that stuff, please let me know. And that's really it. Uh, thanks to you guys for coming and being here at the first talk. Um, thanks to Adafruit for carrying the product itself and that free case that got me. Robert C. Nelson for those builds. Uh, I got the tour inspiration kind of a little bit from the Grug. And then thanks to Jeff for mentoring and pushing me to get that uh, tour demo working. And then here's a couple links. Here's where my uh, GitHub project is. Uh, you can get me through Keybase. And uh, I mentioned all my other stuff earlier. Anyone have any questions? I suggest uh, if you really want to take a look at what that script does, you know, 
hit that, take a look at the source. It's nothing fancy. It's just automated what I typed out. Anyone think of anything? Nope. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Enjoy the con.